Okay, shall we start? All right. Shall we start? Can we start? Yes, I know. Left side is okay. Right side is a bit boring. Okay, let's start. Okay, what we're we going, we going to do today is about network, ad network addresses, IP addresses. All right. So this is. Uh, I mean, you, you might find it a bit complicated. So follow closely. Right. So pay attention because the the there is a, the. The issue of IP addressing is a bit tricky. Well, not, a, not, a, not that tricky, but a bit slightly complicated. Right? So I'll try to explain as simply as possible. And then you try to follow. Of course, the book, you read the book, it will give you better details step by step. Right? So try to follow the, uh, the discussion. All right, so all of us know that a machine must have an IP address before you can connect to internet, right? That's a requirement. If, you, if your machine or device does not have IP, ad, IP address, you cannot connect to internet. Who gives IP address? Either you assign manually, or it's assigned automatically by the server, right? Normally by the uh, by a DHC, DHCP server or your internet gateway or whatever it is, right? So IP addresses are automatically assigned normally nowadays. But the main thing is that every device must have IP address before they can connect to internet. If your, IP, if your machine does not have IP address, your packet which is going out, remember the packet you have level two, layer two of OSI, it looks at MAC address, which, which already have the hardware address. Layer three, it must have IP address, source IP, uh, source, address and destination address. And the router will be looking at your packet and see whether the IP address is there. If there's no IP address, sorry, right? router will not, no, will not be able to do anything. So your, your, your packet cannot go out. So that's why you must have IP address assigned to your machine before it can be routed out to the internet. Right? So it's very important. OK, so we have IP address. So we call this the IPv4 address. Right, so it is basically 32 bits. I think all of you know that. Right? And another thing is that IP addresses must be unique. Every, every device, every machine which is connected to, I, connected to internet must have an individual or unique IP address in the world. There should be no duplicates. If there's a duplicate, there's a problem. Right? Just, like a, just like IC number or passport number, it should be, it should be Unique, so that's why even the, the the even the illegal immigrants get ICs. Their numbers are unique also. They're smart, right? Because if you put a duplicate, they will know that it's been duplicated. So it must be unique, and it defines your connection to the internet. So since we are 32 bits, so we are 32 bits, right? So question is, how many possible IP addresses can exist? So if it's 32 bits, the answer is obvious, 2 to the power 32, right? How much is that? How much is that? Is it, can anybody read? Is it 100, 200, 400? For what? For? For what, for what? Not mega, la. mega is different. Not mega. For what? Okay, what is? If up to here, how much? Nine hundred sixty-seven thousand, right? Up to thousand here. Then this one. After thousand is what? Million. Okay. After million? Billion. All right. So, so four billion. So four point two nine billion different addresses. That's the maximum. That means you cannot have more than 4.29 billion devices connected to the internet in the whole world. At one time, it was okay. Not many people have devices. Now, how many devices do you have? Probably two or three to connect to the internet. Right? You have your, your iPad, you have your phone, 
Anything is, everything is connected to the internet. Next time you have a chip in your head, which is also connected to the internet. All right, so everyone requires IP address, unique IP address. So, that, so obviously, this number is almost finishing or almost finished, you know. All right, so anyway, there's a different story. So there's a different version of IP address called IPv6, right? So anyway, we're not going to do that. But that, that, that takes care of the, the problem of limited number of addresses. Right, so basically, there are a fixed number of IP addresses, right? and all must be unique. So there are two ways to write IP addresses. We call the binary or the dotted decimal. This is the binary version. Right? This is normally the computers use it. We don't use it because it's all ones and zeros. We can understand which is which. We normally use the decimal dotted, dotted decimal format. Right? How do you convert between the two? Simple. 32 bits. Divide into by eight bits, you get four bytes, right? Each byte, eight bits, you convert into a decimal number, right? This is thirty-one. I hope you know how to count. Convert this thirty-one. This is three. This is eleven, and this is one to eight, right? So normally, when we say IP numbers, we normally, in human form, we write it this way, but the machine will convert it into, into binary before you transmit your data. Right? Now, so now we know what IP address looks like. Next thing is that there are different categories of IP addresses. We call them classes. So there's a class A, class B, class C. Right? It's just like you go in the aeroplane, you can take a business class, you can take an economic class, or you can take a, what's the other one? Uh, big, what's the other one? No, no, you haven't, you haven't gone on plane yet, okay. All right? Or you can take a first class, all right? So they're different class, and if each class has different types, all right? So we have a class A, so what do you mean by class A? Class A addresses, class A IP address, class B IP address, class C IP address, different types, all right? So class A IP addresses are normally reserved for large organizations, meaning that this particular company or organization has hundreds or hundreds of thousands of users, right? Say this, this company says, for example, like say Intel or Motorola or TMNet, say, I'm a big company, I have about 200,000 machines in my organization worldwide. Now give me one IP number, right? I want IP addresses. So we can give a class A IP address to that particular organization, right? Then we have a class B for mid-sized organizations and class C for small organizations, right? So USM, where do you think it is? Class A, B, or C? Where do you think it is? A, B, or C? A. A, A B, or C? It's B, all right? We are mid-sized, not too bad. Not too bad, actually. Right. Right, so basically, so basically, the, so of, out of all the out of out of all the 4.2 billion addresses, there about half of them is reserved for class A, right? One quarter, class B, and then about uh, I don't know how much this, one sixth, or, or one twelfth, or whatever, is is class C, and then there's class D and class E. Class D, E, E, never mind, forget it. So there are different uh, reservations, number of addresses reserved for each class, right? So now, how do we differentiate one class from another? Because when we look at these numbers, basically we are numbers, right? So we have to differentiate the class A, class B, class C from the numbers. How do you assign numbers? Now just like I say, in, in the aeroplane is now, if you have a first class ticket, most likely your seat is sitting in front, behind the pilot. If you are business class, in the middle. Economic class, go at the back. Right? Your, your seat numbers will tell you your, uh, your, your class. Right? Same thing here. So those guys sitting in front are class A, sitting in the middle is class B, sitting at the back is class C. All right? So you sitting in front, you, 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 you will get more things. All right. So class A addresses, remember that we have four bytes, we have 32 bits, 
right? 32 bits here, 4. 8 bits, 8 bits, 8 bits, 8 bits, right? 4 blocks. So 4 blocks, 4 bytes. So if it's a class A address, it must start with a 0. Right? So uh, address, where the f uh, IP address, where the first bit is 0, is a class A address. If the first bit is 1, 0, first two bits are 1, 0, then it becomes a, a class B. Class C will be 1, 1, 0. All right? So if we do a custom calculation, if the first bit is 0, that means the remaining bits will be from can go from 0, 0, 0, 0, 8, byte, 8 bits until 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 7 times. So you convert it from 0 to 1 to 7. All right? So the first byte, the value is from 0 to 1 to 7, then it becomes a class A address. So the first, first, the first number of your IP address is between 0 and 1 to 7, then it's a class A address. All right? If it's class B, you calculate 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, until 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Then it'll be from 1 to 8 to 1, 9, 1. All right? And if it's class C, 1, 1, 0, so it goes from, if you convert it into decimal, it becomes 1, 9, 2 to 2 to 3. All right? So looking at your, looking at a sample, an example IP address like this, you can quickly say whether it's class A, class B, or class C. Right? So in this case, it should be a class, class B, right? All right, so that's how it works. Uh, we'll come to this later. All right, next thing. So that's class A, class B, class C, right? And they'll be differentiated by the first, uh, the first few bits in the first byte of the address. Next thing is that an IP address is divided into two parts so-called network ID and also the host ID. It means that this particular number is normally divided into two parts. One, one part of it, it represents the network address. Second part of it, the other part represents the host address. Right? Because you put machines in a LAN. All the machines in the LAN must have the same LAN address must have the same network address, right? So they must be grouped together, right? But each machine must have a unique address, right? So normally what happens is that we divide, normally the first few, the first few bytes are the network address. The remaining are the host address, right? So how the class A, class B, class C differs is that how many bits are given to network address and how many bits given to Host address. So if you can go back here now, if the first byte is given all together, the, the, the yellow ones, right, the yellow yellow uh, block, if if all the first, if all the the bits in the first byte, all the first eight bits is given to network ID, that means the remaining twenty four bits are become the Post ID. That's class A. All right? Class B, example here is now. If it's class B, then the first two bytes belong to the network ID. The remaining two bytes are for the host ID. Class C is first three bytes belongs to the network. Only the last byte belongs to the host. All right? So what it means is that if you have a class B address, Oh, sorry, if, let's say if you have a class A address, this, every machine, so if you, your organization, you are class A organization, you're given a class A address, IP address, meaning that all machines in your organization must have the same network ID. Each machine in your organization will have a different host ID, right? Just like you say, if you are, belong to USM, if you got, you got an email, your domain is c, uh, cs.usm.my. That's your domain, right? And then, that is your network ID. After that, you have individual email accounts, which is based on your name. That's individual, right? 
So same thing here. So in other words, for class A, the first byte is reserved for network ID. The remaining three bytes are for host ID. So what this means is that if the first byte is reserved for network, network, that means, that means how many different organizations can be given a class A address. Right? One, one organization given one class A address. So if it starts like this, so you can give, give first, first, first organization 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Another organization 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Right? That's, that's the class A address. But each of them will have can have this number of bytes, this number of bits for their machine, individual machines for the host ID. Right? So it means that the number of number of class A addresses that, that exist are only 128. 0 to 127. Alright? And each block, each address, how many hosts or machines can it support? It depends. Now, that means the remaining are used for the host ID. Right? So class A, the remaining are used as a host ID. So there are 24 bits here. So each organization can have 2 to the power of 24. 2 to the power of 24, that is about 16 million, 16.7 million machines in the organization. All right? That's what class A address is. So class A address is very, very large. All right? So each, each class A address can have 16.7 million, 16.7 million different IP addresses for their internal machines. And how many, how, many, how many organizations, how many class A organizations can exist in the world? 128 at the most. Right? All right, so, that, so that's why the class A addresses are very, very rare. Even, even in Malaysia, I don't think anybody has class A address. Right? If you give class A address, let's say you have five PCs, I say I want a class A address. What happens? You are given 16.7 million IP numbers. How many you use? Or five or six? The remaining, you keep it. Nobody else can use. All right, so it's, it's wastage. All right, so class B, the first 16 bits, right? So first 16 bits means to the power 16. So we have 16. So class B, we have about 16,000. We can have 16,000 different organizations with class B address in the whole world. Right, and each organization can have 65,000 machines in the organization. So for USM, we have a class B address. So therefore, we, uh, we, we, the maximum number of USM IP addresses can be 65,000. Right? The moment, so we cannot have more than 65,000 devices connected from USM going out. If you have more, the remaining cannot be given IP number, right? And so far, we've been okay, no problem, right? Class C, now we have how many? Three bytes, right, to the power of 24. Well, not exactly, so it's been 192 to 2 to 3, actually. So in this case, we will have about 2, two million plus different class C addresses. And each class C address can only have one, eight bytes, eight bits of data, eight bits of, of host ID only. So eight bits means two to the power eight is 256. So one organization, if given a class C address, can have a maximum of 256 machines in their network. Not more than that. Right? And the thing is that once one organization is given one IP address, it cannot be shared. So you say, I give you a class C address, okay? Give you a class C address. Means that you have 25, 256 IP numbers for you. Whether you use it or not, it's your, your problem. If you only use few, the rest is wasted. It cannot be allocated to someone else. All right? So that's why the numbers run out very fast. So if, if you are greedy, you say, I want a class C address. Right? I pay you. Or you only use a few machines. The remaining IP numbers cannot be assigned to anybody else. Right? 
So the IP, IP numbers are basically assigned according to requirements, right? So whether, whether you are, which organization you are, how many, how many how hosts do you have in your, in your organization, then we will assign an appropriate, uh, IP, uh, uh, appropriate class of IP address, either A, B, or C, right? So that's why large part of available addresses are wasted if it's not properly allocated. All right, so that's the problem. All right, so class D and class E normally we don't use, so, so forget about that. So the main thing is the class A, B, and C. Right? So we differentiate from the first number. And also how many bytes are, how many bits are reserved for host ID and how many bits are reserved for the network ID. Right? So that's important. All right, so the network ID identifies the network of the LAN. The host ID identifies the host. All, right? All machines in one network will have the same network ID. Okay. So, right. Next thing is the mask. All right. So what mask basically does is that it needs to help you to identify which part of the address is network ID and which part is the host ID. So given an address like this, you will know, right? Given an address like this, which part is network ID, which part is host? I will know, right? Unless we identify whether it's a class A, class B, or class C. Right? So we can do that by looking at the first number. We can do that, right? So to related to that, related to the class A, class B, we have the the mask. The mask basically tells you that, so if a network ID, if for class A, the first eight bits are reserved for network ID, the remaining will be the host. So in, in mask, then we put all the one, the network ID bits to one for class A. For class B, the first 16 bits become one because they are the network ID. For class C, the first 24. So this will be converted into into the default mask. So the mask, if you convert all 111111, 8 bits, it becomes 255. So 255 is 0 .0, 0.0.0.0. So that is your mask for class A. Class B, the first two bytes is 255. For class C, the first three bytes are 255, and the last byte is 0. Right? So this is how, how we differentiate. So mask basically tells you, it will tell the router basically how to, how to differentiate whether this address belongs to this network or next network, right? It's like the mask, you know the mask you put on your head, on your, put it on your face, you go for Hall Halloween uh, party or whatever, you put a mask, what do you see? When you wear a mask, what can be seen on your face? When you put a mask, what, what can be seen on your face? It covers everything except your eyes, of course. If you cover your eyes, you're going to see where you're going. So the mask will have two holes at least. Right? So it covers everything except your eyes. So same thing, the mask covers everything except the net ID. Right? So net ID is the one visible, the rest is all zeros. That's the idea. So either we represent it in, in decimal format or we represent in a slash format. So mask can be, can be written two ways, this way or this way. This way means that slash eight means that the first eight bits is network ID, simple. Slash 16 means the first 16 bits is a network ID, or the first 24 bits is a network ID. That's what it says, all right? So this is the dotted decimal format or the slash format, we call it the slash format, right? Okay, now, now let's say you have given, we, okay, uh, Mimos gives USM a class B address, right? We have a class B address, and it's 161.142.00, that's what it is, right? So it should be this way. First two bytes are the 
first two bytes is the network ID. The remaining will be the host ID. So in USM is 161.142.0.0. So 161.142 are the network ID. Right? Now, so it gives the USM how many, how many machines you can have? You can have 65,000 machines in USM. So one way to do is that we start give, giving the machines numbers one by one. Let's say we start with chancellery first. The vice chancellor gets 161.142.0.1. Deputy vice chancellor gets 161.142.0.2. We have three vice chancellors, two, three, four, and so on. Right? We go by that sequence. But it gets messy. Right? Next time, the vice chancellor, the, 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 uh, vice chancellor does not like the number one. His favorite number is number seven. He says, I want number seven. Then you have a problem. All right? So it doesn't work that way. So the other option is that instead of giving one number, a special number to each user, and all users are exactly the same, that, that means we convert, that means whole USM is one LAN. Inside this LAN, there are 65,000 machines. All right? It's not practical. Too many machines. So the other, the other way is that we go by school. Okay, vice chancellor go under, under, under the category of registry or chancellery. Each school, each school will, will, will become one land, right? And then each, each school will, will, will allocate IP numbers to their own machines and make sure it doesn't interfere with others. So now what we need to do is we need to divide our IP addresses given to us by MIMOS and the class B address into smaller IP addresses into smaller blocks. We have one big block with 65,000 maximum addresses. We need to divide it into, say, each one is, say, 100 or 200 IP addresses. And we distribute to each school. Right? So one big block of IP addresses we, we, we make into smaller blocks. So that's called subnetting. Right? Right? So one class B address, we can divide it into smaller subnetworks or smaller LANs. So a large block of addresses can be divided into smaller networks. Right? How are we going to do it? We'll see later. Right? So in other words, the, masks will be, the, the number of ones in the mask will be increased. Right? Slash 16 to become slash 18. Right? We'll take a look at it later. So this is one. Right? The other one, Right? The other one is, is the other way around, supernetting. Meaning that we allow small blocks, small class C addresses to, 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 to become one large block, combine several networks into a bigger, block, bigger network. So assuming we have, coming back to this example again, we have many, we have, we have many small organizations, for example, like in, say in, in the industrial zone, by La Paz, right? each factory or each company has one class C address. Each one is happy with its 256 addresses. Now we say, okay, we want to make the Bailna Pass area as one network by its own. Right? So we have many small lands there. Each land belongs to one company, one class C. So we're going to combine them, say, all the organizations in class C in Vinyl Pass, will be combined to go to a router somewhere and then combine all these blocks into one big block when you go out. Right? Or just like USM one. Each school will have a small block. When you go to USM level, outside, outside the world, we only see it as one, USM. Right? No matter which school you come from. So that's the opposite, supernetting. Right? So it basically combines several networks into a bigger network. In this case, the number of ones will decrease. You will go move towards left. All right. So again, this is uh, so if, if this is the way. What slash twenty four slash twenty four is what slash twenty four is this right class C address. So class C address you break up into smaller ones, then slash twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, or twenty seven. Right, meaning that there are more bits. There are more bits available for network. Network ID becomes larger. Then. Right? All 
Okay. So address depletion, class A and class B addresses are, are already finished, right? Not many left. Class C addresses are, are available, but it's not. It's probably too small for most organizations. So most companies, 256 addresses are not enough. It's just, just too little, right? Right, so this, so in, in classes, in classful addressing, we go by category A, B, or C. And we can only divide the addresses based on A, B, or C, based on 18, slash 8, slash 8 16, or 24. Right, that's how we divide the blocks. So the other, the other option is that we go by classless, meaning that there are no classes. Right? In other words, we don't go to class A, class B, class C. If you say I1, uh, if, if you go earlier, let's say the early example, the three classes, if someone say you, you want a 16 addresses, right, then I have to give you a class C. If you want 20 addresses, I have to give you a class C. By the classless, if you want 20 addresses, okay, we'll give you 20 addresses. If you want 32, we'll give you 32. Right? Depending on your requirements, we will not give you more than you need. So in other words, there'll be no wastage. Right? That's the idea. So addresses will be granted in blocks, the size of block depending on requirements. And there are a few conditions now. That first of all, the addresses given in a block must be contiguous. They must be in sequence. So if I give you 20 addresses, they must be in sequence. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number six, and the 20. Right? Can I cannot say one here, one there, jump over, no. Right? They must be in sequence. Second condition, the number of addresses given in a block must be power of two. Right? 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on. If you want 30 addresses, we'll give you 32. Two free, doesn't matter. Right? Because we cannot give you 30. You want 20, we have to give you 32. Right? So it must be power of two. And the third condition is that the first address must be divisible by the number of addresses. Right? So if you want 30 addresses, okay, we, give, we give you 32. But your first address, IP number, must be, divide, must be able to divide by number 32. Right, so example here. So let's say we give you this block, 205, 16, 37, 32. This is the first address we give you, and there are 16 addresses. So the last one will be 47. Right? So first condition, they must be contiguous. They must be in sequence, 32, 33, 34, 35, until 47. Second condition, must be power of two. So we have 16 addresses, that's power of two. All right, no problem. The first address in the block must be visible by the number of addresses. So 32 here must be able to divide by this number without remainder. So 32 can divide by 16 evenly. That should be done. Right? So in other words, we cannot give you an address starting with 20. Nope. 20 cannot divide by 16 evenly, no. So your first address cannot be a 20. It must be a 32, or a 0, or a 64, or 48, or whatever it is. As long as it can divide by 16. All right? So these are the three conditions. So now, our, our addresses, our block addresses, are basically defined this way, right? the same way, x, y, z, t, slash n. Right? The only difference is that now the n, the slash n, the mask value can be anything from 0 to 32. Earlier, our mask value is only limited to only three options, slash 8, 16, or 24. Right? Class A, class B, or class C. Now, we can give any number between 0 and 32. Right? So we can divide by blocks, any number will do. Right, so the block will consist of first address, last address, and the number of addresses. Right? So something like this. So this is the block address given, and the slash 18 means the first 18 bits is the network ID. The remaining is the host ID. All right, let's take an example. Right, so let's say we have a block of addresses. It's given to an organization. One of the address is this one, 205, 16, 37, 39. 
This is one of the addresses in the block. It's not the first one. We don't know, we don't know, we don't know which one it is. Right? We want to find out what is the size of the block, how many addresses in the block, what's the first address, and what's the last address. Right? That's my idea. So first, what do we do? So the first thing we do is that we convert the decimal format of the IP address into its binary. Right? So 205 here, 16 here, 37 here, 39 here. Right? Now, we play around with the, with the slash 28. The slash 28 means that the first 28 bits is the network ID. And the remaining bits are the host ID. Meaning that the first 28 bits you cannot touch. In the organization, the first 28 bits will remain the same for every machine in the organization. Because it's a network ID. Only the last, last few bits is the one which will change according to the each uh, machine. Right? So the first address, simple, how to do? We take this address after conversion to binary. The first 28 bits, leave it alone. The remaining bits, you put zeros. All right? So the last four bits become 0, 0, 0. And after that, you convert it back into decimal. This is your first address in the block. All right? The last address in the block, simple. Again, first 28 bits you don't touch. The remaining bits you put all once. And then you convert. This is your last address in the block. So how many addresses you have in this particular block? Again, simple. Right? We have 28 bits you cannot touch. You cannot change. You can only play around with four bits. So number of addresses in the block is 2 to the power of 4, 16. All right? That's how you get. Or you go the other way, 32, 32 minus the number of, 32 minus the mask. All right? So this is the same one here. 32 to 47, right? So this is the same as this block given here. Right, so any number you take from this block, take any number, any number you like, from there you can find out what's the first, what's the last, and what, how many addresses are, in, 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 are there in the block itself. All right? Simple, right? So this is one way how to do things. This is the second way, this is the sec second method. The first method is normally used by humans, you and me. Right? The second method is used by routers, right? Because they deal with ones and zeros, it's much easier for them to do logical operation and all operation to do that. You get the same result. So a second alternative of calculating the first address and last address is this way, right? You take the first address, then you take the IP address given. It's the same address, eh? remember, from the previous example. Convert into binary, then you apply the mask, mask is 28, it means the first 28 bits will be 1. Remember here? When you say mask is 16, it means the first 16 bits will be 1. Right? 20, first 24 means first 24 bits are 1. So in this case, it is 28. So first 28 bits of the mask are 1, the remaining are 0. Then you do a all operation, uh, sorry, end operation on the address with the mask. So one, one and one is one, one and one is one, zero and one is zero, and so on. Right? Logical end operation. And this is what you'll get. So then you convert this into decimal, you'll get that this is the first address in the block. For the last address, take the original address. Now what you do is, the mask you complement it. The reverse of the mask. So one, 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 the first 28 bits is supposed to be 1, now the first 28 bits becomes 0. The opposite. And you do an all operation now. And the result you get is your last address in the block. All right? The, same, the answer is the same as the previous example. How many number of addresses? Take the... Take the value of the mask complement, complemented. 
right? When it's complement the mask, what's the value? 1 1 1 1, which is 15 plus 1, yeah, 16. All right. So you have two choices, whether to do it this way or to do it this way, whichever way you prefer. All right. So given IP number like this, given IP number, and given a mask. Find out what is the first IP number, what is the last IP number in the block, and how many addresses there are. All right, so I can, I can look at this machine and say, okay, this machine's IP number is such, it is such 27. How many blocks? Are, how many addresses there are in, in this particular block? All right. Okay. So try it. Whichever way, either this way or the previous way, whichever way you prefer. Depending whether you're a human or a machine. If you're a human, you prefer this. If you're a machine, you prefer this. Right? I leave it to you. All right. Okay, so each block will have, right? So we have first address in the block. We have the last address in the block and also the number of addresses. So normally is that the first address in the block is, is called the network address, the sub-network address for that particular LAN. Right? And normally it is not assigned to any host. Right? So the first address in the block is not assigned to any host. So for example, like this is now. This is the first address in the block. So the first address will not be assigned to, to any host. It's normally used by the router. Right? So used by routers to route the traffic to and from outside. So you have starting from 28 until, uh, sorry, uh, starting from 33. The, the first address is 32, right? 32 to 47. Normally the first and last you don't use. So 33 until 46. Right? This can be used to be assigned to individual machines. The first one will be used by network, and the last one will be used for something else. We'll take a look at it later. Right? So what this router will do is that it knows that any machine, any packet coming in with, with, uh, with, 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 where? Uh, with this one, 2505, 16, 37, 40, slash 28, it knows that, look at the packet, it knows that this particular packet belongs to one of these machines here. Right? Just like this. A packet comes in with a slash, the router will, will quickly check, will quickly calculate the first and the last. Then it will know whether this thing is within that particular uh, block or not. If it's not, it throw it out. If it is, pass it on. Right? So that's how the router will check. So this we said earlier already. So the classless address, classless addressing requires two level hierarchy, right? There's a prefix, it defines a network, right? Network here, ID. And then the other one will be the, so this is the host ID, this is the network ID. And the whole thing is a host address, all right? So the network, the network address, network ID will be common, the same or the same to all the addresses in the network, in the LAN. Every machine in that LAN will have the same prefix. What changes will be only these changes. The host ID will change. All right, let's take an example. Let's do uh, subnetting, right? So let's say an organization is given this particular address. It has this block of address and slash 26. Okay, if you want to know, calculate. You can calculate what is the first address. You can calculate what's the last address. You can calculate how many addresses are there. Right? You can do that by now. So if you, you find out that this contains 64 addresses. How do you know 64? The slash 26 it means the first 26 bits you cannot touch. It belongs to the network ID. How many, how many bits remaining? Six. Six now. 26 plus 6, 32. All right. So remaining six bits used for host. So 2 to the power 6 is 64. All right. So you have 64 addresses can be, can be assigned by this organization. All right. 
Now, this organization has three, three offices. First office has 32 machines, second one 16 and 16. So what the organization want to do is that you want to further divide this block into three smaller blocks. So it's given one large IP address block with 64 addresses, and now it wants to subdivide again, subnetwork, subdivide the address block into a smaller one based on its requirement. Right? Where the first block will have 32 addresses, second 16, and last one 16. Right? So how do we do? We look at the requirement. The first block requires 32 addresses. Right? So normally, remember here, if you want addresses, means you look at these bits. How many bits are required here? So if you want now, if you need 32 addresses, how many bits are required? To the power of how many gives you the 32? Five, right? So five. To the, to the power of five gives you 32. So that means the network mask will be 32 minus five. It will be slash 27. All right? So first 27 bits, you don't touch. The remaining five bits is reserved to be used for addresses for the first subnet. All right? Second one, 16 bits, uh, 16 addresses. 16 addresses, you can use four bits to the power of four. So therefore, the four right bits, leave it alone, can be used for host ID. And the mask will be now 20, 32 minus four which will be 28. So the mask for second subnetwork is 28. And third one is also 28 because also 16 addresses. Right? This is how it goes. So the first subnet earlier was 26. So we, we, we are being given address which is slash 26. That means the first 26 bits, the organization cannot touch. You cannot, cannot change anything. We can only play around with this 60 bits. What we're going to do is that we're going to take the first bit reserved for the first office, and the remaining five bits can be used to represent the 32 addresses in the first office. Right? For the second and third, we require only four bits to the power 16. So the remaining two bits can be used for the subnetwork to, define, to divide between this and this. This 26 remains the same. This one you cannot touch because this is here. The organization is given this particular block or address. We cannot change that. What we can do is to further divide the remaining 16 and then subdivide. And as I say, I give you, you are one big class. You are one big block, right? So I say, okay, you guys form a groups. Or, or, or I divide, okay, I ask you to make, I ask you to form groups according to your state, where you come from, where you were born, right? So all you, you gather together, Penang, Kelantan, Kedah, and all that, right? That's subnetworking. So one big group, you divide into smaller groups, right? And then, after you, after you have grouped yourself according to your state, you can divide further. Which, which town is it you come from in the, in the state? Another level of subnetting then. Now, for, as far as concerned, it doesn't matter to me. For me, it's just a state. You divide further. You can go later on the street level and whatever you want. Right? So as far as I'm concerned, I only give you this, 26. All right? OK. So this is how we do it. So first thing to do is that we need to find out what is the mask for each, each subnetwork. That's the first thing to do. Right? So now we know the mask for first subnet is 27. The remaining two is 28. So now it's easy. Well, it looks easy, though. Does it look easy? It's only ones and zeros. All right? Put in the proper place, that's all. All right, so subnetwork one, so this is our, our original block, right? 14.0 slash 26. This is the one given. So first thing to do is that we convert that into binary. And first 26, we don't touch. So we can only play around with the, the one in red the one which is after the, the last six bits. Correct? Same thing here. Only the last six bits we can play around with. All right? 
So first, first subnet is slash 27, second one is slash 28, 28, we calculated that earlier. Right? So this is our mask. Remember? So the mask can get first slash 27, means that there are 21, 27 ones followed by five zeros. So our net first network address will be simple. We take this one, what do you do? Take this one, and then the first network address will be all zeros. So the, the, the remaining five bits are become all zeros. That's our first address. The last address, the first 27 bits you don't change. In the subnetwork, the first 27 bits you remain the same. And the last address will be the, five, the last five bits will become all one. So you have 14.0. 14.31, right? The same way we do as me. So the first address is normally reserved. We cannot assign it. To, we cannot assign it to a machine, right? It's called a net network address. The last address, also a special address, we don't assign. We cannot assign to a machine. It becomes called as a broadcast broadcast address. You remember broadcast last time? When you do a broadcast network, it means every user on the network will get the message packet. Right? So when we broadcast, our destination address is this, IP number is this, that means all machines in this subnetwork, one will get that particular packet. Right? So if, you, if you form groups into, according to your state, and I broadcast to Kelantan only, so only the person in the Kelantan who belong to a group called Kelantan will get the message. The rest will not get a message. Right? So, the, so in other words, the first address we can assign to host is the next one. So first address in the block goes to network address. Second address in the block is the first address you can assign to a host. The last address in the block cannot be assigned to a host. It, it becomes a broadcast address. And the second last one will be the last address for the host. So in other words, now how many addresses we have? We have 32 addresses, right? 32 addresses from 0 to 31. But how many addresses we can actually assign to the host? How many? We have 32 addresses, right? From 0 to 31, 31 in the block. But not all of them can be assigned to machines, to hosts. How many can be assigned to hosts? 30, right? Because the two will be, the first one, the last one cannot be assigned to a machine, to a host. They are special addresses. So, right? So although we're given 32 addresses, but only 30 can be used for assigning IP numbers to the machines. Second one, same thing. Subnet two is 16, 16 nodes, right? So now, it's slash 28, that means the first 28, bit, 28 bits you don't touch. Right? And then the first address will be, first 28 bits you don't touch of this one. First 28 bits you don't touch, and the remaining four bits you put zeros. And then the, the last one, the remaining four bits you put one. So here, the first address will be 32, 33, and then last one is 47. And same thing here. So what you'll notice is that the address goes from 14.0, this is your block, right? So 14.0 is the first address, 14.1, 14.32, 31, then 32, 33, 47, 48, until 63. So it's nicely in sequence. No, nothing is wasted. These are machines, individual machines. Okay, we shall stop here then. <laughs>